anymore, Mr. Wiggins. Alice, one of these mornings I'm going to get the mail before you can snatch it away. As far as I'm concerned, you didn't even have to stop today. Your army captain don't write very regular, does he? It's been... Eight days. That long? Well, I could have sworn it was only a week. Let's see, uh, last time he wrote, he was stationed in Florida. Idaho. The letter before came from Florida. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. The army sure keeps Captain Voss moving around. Well, he knows more about electronics than any man they've got. You don't say. Uh-huh. Why, before he was transferred, he set up a whole radar system around Lockheed. No kidding. And since then, the Army's just been shipping Jim all over the country. Well, it seems to me they ain't leaving much for the other nine million men in service. I didn't mean that. And besides, you've heard all this before. <laughs> a hundred times. Well, all I can say is, this young Edison must be a pretty wonderful guy to have a girl like you, Alice. Mm, it's me that's lucky. Well, here's hoping you get luckier. And maybe, uh... When Captain Voss finishes wiring up the state of uh, <coughs> Kentucky, they'll give him a furlough. Kentucky? He's not in Kentucky. No? Well, that, uh, that's a Kentucky postmark, if I ever seen one. Oh, Mr. Wiggins, I hate you. He is in Kentucky. See you tomorrow, Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> be somebody else around here who can fix it. Why don't you guys give me a rest? Because your work's better. And the price fits the prison budget. Who says I can fix it? Well, if you can't, genius, we'd just better close up shop. Come on, let's keep the warden happy. That ought to do it. Try this wrench. Thanks, boss. It's all right, Lieutenant. Call me anytime. That is, anytime in the next four years and 12 days. You can head back to the rest of the men. Get your promise. Don't mail this letter till you get to Maryland. Wouldn't it be easier to tell this chicker captain's a jailbird? You ain't the first guy that swiped government property. Oh, shut up. Just mail the letter. Okay, okay. What does Jim have to say, Alice? All the things I want him to say, Mother. That's nice. Anything about his coming home, dear? No. They've transferred him again. To Maryland. You'd think with the way they've been working him, they'd give him a furlough. From the way he writes, he doesn't even expect one. Not that he complains. So I guess I shouldn't. Mother! Alice! Did you hear? On the radio. They're talking about a bomb they just dropped in Japan. They think it'll end the war. This unprecedented and historic announcement of an atom bomb, a nuclear weapon releasing energies in unbelievable amounts, dwarfing by hundreds of times the force of conventional explosives. Fragmentary reports heard on the Tokyo radio hint of great devastation in the city of Hiroshima. The strategic target area selected by the Allied command 
for the awesome bomb's first use against the enemy. And it is more than barely possible, say reliable reports, that this new and fearfully destructive atomic weapon will bring Japan's warlords to their knees. Oh, Mom. Maybe this is the end of it. Maybe it'll bring Jim home. Honey, I hope so. Hey, what's the matter with you, boss? Don't you know the war's over? So what's it gonna get you? A bowl of rice and a free ride on the Emperor's white horse? Or maybe you wish we lost the war. I lost the war during my court martial. Hello, Jim. Chaplain. Sit down, Jim. I want to talk to you about your future. Future? Aren't you being a little premature, Chaplain? You can start thinking about it right now. That's why I sent for you. You're leaving. You mean they're letting me out of here? The president has reviewed your case. He feels that many boys like you, uprooted from normal lives, rushed into the army, might have made mistakes they wouldn't have made otherwise. The mistake I made was taking a little army equipment. But nobody blames the army. Captains pay at that. Don't try to justify what you did, Jim. You can't. No more than you can excuse what you did as a student at that school down in Los Angeles. I was just a kid then. So were the others who trusted you with the class funds. I told you I paid it back, every cent of it. I'm not as concerned with the Jim Voss who came in here as I am with the Jim Voss who's going out there to a new life. You've always taken the easy path, Jim, and found reasons for it. But they were never truthful reasons. And you just can't compromise with the truth. There'll be a lot of times out there when the going will get rough. But then you must question your decision. Ask yourself, is this what is right or is this what is easy? Don't worry, Chaplain. I appreciate this break. I'll protect it. Are you going to start out by telling that girl? Tell her what? I... I know about those letters you've been sneaking out of here. Letters signed by a captain on active duty. Oh, those. I just didn't want to hurt Alice with it. With the truth? She'll have to know sooner or later, Jim. For one thing, you won't be going home as a captain. You'll be just a private. But what is more important, if she's half the girl you think she is, you owe it to her. It's a pretty tough assignment. Yes, you might even lose her. But it's a lot easier to bear the setbacks if you know you've approached them with honesty and courage. You're right, of course, Chet. Good luck, Jim. Thank you, Chaplain. Yeah, yeah, it won't be too long. All right. Oh, uh, Alice, there's something else I have to tell you. You've told me everything you have to for now, darling. You're coming home. That's all that matters. Why, even your decorations don't count. My decorations? Now, don't tell me the Army hasn't just loaded you down with medals for what you've done. By the way, what do I call you now, Major Voss? No. No, no promotions. It's still kept. guys for train space. You're back. That's the important thing. Mrs. Park. Hello, Jim. Welcome home. 
Wow! Look at all those medals. What are all those stars? They're, uh, battle stars, Helen. Alice never told us you were overseas. Where were you? What was it like? You didn't get wounded, did you? Give him a chance, Helen, one question at a time. What battle was this, Jim? Oh, for goodness sake, Helen, let him catch his breath. He'll be around for a while, you know. Yes. I'll be around for a long time. And it hasn't been so very long, darling. Why, what can you expect in a few months? It seems like years. You can count the number of customers I've had on one hand. Look. Not enough business to pay the first month's rent. Better have a pretty good excuse for the landlord next month. I can help, Jim. I'm afraid the secretary's salary wasn't designed to put a man on the road to his first million. Do you have to have a million dollars? You know what I want for you. Do you really, honey? I want to give you everything. But I didn't ask for everything. No, and you didn't ask for a guy that couldn't afford to buy his way into a penny arcade either. Jim, we have each other. Isn't that important? Sure it's important. But we can't get married. Why not? Where would we set up housekeeping? At your folks' home or mine? It would only be for a little while, darling. Why, with your know-how, it's just a question of time. It won't work. I gotta have my own house, furniture, new car, respectability. Respectability? What about your war record? What you did for your country? Jim, you do what you think is best. I'll see you later for dinner. Let's go to that little pizza place. Sure. It's about time I gave your mother a rest. <laughs> <laughs> Got the con drugstore said you use some business. What kind of business? It's radio. You tell that guy at the drugstore this isn't a radio repair shop. He already knows that, Buster, but he figures an engineer might do a better job. Oh, he could do a better job. Don't be so stuffy, Jim. You could do it as a favor for the gentleman. All right, let's have a look at it. The boss would like it back as soon as possible. The boss? Mr. Rumsden. Charles Rumsden. Am I supposed to know who he is? You ain't been in L.A. long, buddy, if you don't. Lived here all my life, mister. Uh, here's your trouble. With labor and parts, it'll cost you $20. Yeah, hey, that's pretty steep, ain't it? You said you wanted it fixed right. It'll take me several hours. Deliver it? If I have to. Here, here's the address. I'll get right to it. You're going to be busy, Jim, so I may as well get back to the office. Not too busy. It's already fixed. But you told him it would take several hours. All that was wrong was a loose battery connection. You charged him $20. Uh, the way the chauffeur talked, his boss can afford a good price. And I can afford to take you to dinner for a change. It isn't right, Jim. Oh, honey. Tonight we'll go to a real restaurant. Steak instead of pizza. But, Jim, you should... Never mind. I'll meet you here at six. Okay. this job, and I've been standing here for five minutes pushing this stupid bell. Okay, so the bell isn't working. So my time's important, too. Relax. Come on in. I'll get your dough for you. 
I don't pay you to bring me problems, Herbie. I'm just telling you what Marie tells me, Chief. She plays it like she's got her own dice. Save it. What is it, Romana? Repair on the radio, Mr. Ralston. Twenty dollars. Pay him, Tony. Oh, Romano. Well, that electrician is still here. Have him find out why the front doorbell won't work. Well, he's not exactly an electrician, boss, but I'll see what I can do about it. <laughs> Look, Chief, I offered Murray Blanche a deal. I didn't send you to make a deal, Herbie. I sent you with orders. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't know what her connections are, but she don't take orders. She figures on working this town, she'll take orders the same as everyone else does. I don't know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Must be a short somewhere. I'd like to look at the wires under the house. Right over here. I'll get my jacket. Let's not kid ourselves, Chief. Marie's a smart dame. It's a cinch the cops can't finger her. And every one of her girls that they picked up act like they never heard of her. She says she don't need us. She's got a good deal. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I know she's got a good deal. That's why I'm taking it over. That's not the way she figures it. That's the way I figure it. Where's Nick? No, I gave him the word. He should be here any minute. Yeah, he went to see a guy that opened a book in Burbank. The dope thinks he can run it by himself. Same as Marie. so important about a doorbell that doesn't work. Maybe I'd better explain it in private, Mr. Rumsen. Well, speak up. These are my friends. Know what a bug is, mister? A what? A bug. A hidden microphone. There's one in your house. Well, who'd want to listen in on anything I had to say? Did you pull it out? Got to find it first. Anyway, I thought you might like to know who put it in. Oh, you could do that, huh? Easy. A lot easier than some of the projects we worked on during the war. We? Who's we? I was a captain in communications. That is, until I was graduated to fixing doorbells. Uh, what would you need? I've got all the parts at the office. Uh-huh. Go with them, Herbie. There you are, Captain. Oh, I can't change a hundred, Mr. Rumsden. Anybody ask you for change? Sounds like a smart kid. You stupid idiot. Let them bug the house like that. You better check your house, Nick. All our places. You know, that kid could come in handy. He knows what he's talking about. You know, I asked you over here today. Yeah? What do you want to do about it? Put her out of business. The keeps? Sit down, we'll talk about it.
couldn't tell you, Alice. I just can't make dinner. Is anything wrong? Of course not. But, darling, you're acting so strangely. Alice, I'm busy. I, I, I've got a job to do. A good one. All right, Jim. Good night, honey. Good night, Alice. I hope he's right. That's the only bug they planted. You got to see this to really believe it, Mr. Rumson. Both the desserts, Romano. All right, Herbie. Let's go see. Use something like a mine detector to trace the wire. It goes to the room over the garage next door. Well, it's nice to know who your good neighbors are. The radio did the trick. They're beefing, they can't hear a word. <laughs> Who's they? The police. You sure that's the only bug in my house? I've covered every inch of it. I'd like to talk to you. Come on in and have a drink. I don't uh, like to drink on an empty stomach. <laughs> Come on. If you'll let me pull that bug out of the wood box, you can turn the radio off. Tell me something, boss. Could you develop equipment to listen in on a telephone? That is, record a conversation without the owner knowing anything about it? Wiretapping is illegal, Mr. Rumsden. I know the law. I practice it. Just answer the question. I could put the equipment together. Hmm? I see. Well, now, what I have in mind is a very worthy cause. We're going to help the police department. Even the police aren't allowed to tap private wires. That's why we're going to do it for them. Here's 500. There'll be another five. You do a good job. Well, I, I guess if it's for the police, I, it'll be all right. How soon could you get your equipment together? Well, I have to get the parts a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Go with him, Herbie. Well, let's go, chum. What's the game, Charlie? I think Marie is practically out of business. over the phone, I'd be busy, Alice. Busy with what? Now, will you stop worrying? I always worry about you, honey. I'm working on something. Can't you tell me about it? Only that it'll bring us enough money to get married. I'll, I'll call you later, Alice. When? You heard him, he'll call you. Come on. Wait a minute. Please, Jim, it's all right. Call me when you can. Don't ever try that again, Herbie. Rumson's working. Wait a minute. 
Look, chum, Rumsden is paying for that minute and all the rest of your time. Now get your equipment together. We're late. Tonight, Chief. We're on our way to Marie's apartment house now. Right. Uh, Nick, is your lawyer giving to me straight? You connected in any way with Marie Blanche? You know I don't fool around with that kind of stuff. It's a good thing you don't. Why, did Marie get herself in a beef with the cops? Why, no, they don't even know she's operating out of 211 Roscoe Place. What's all the excitement? I got a tip someone's tapping her telephone. Oh, that someone could buy a mess of trouble if the cops knew. Oh, they'd love him if he came up with enough evidence to help him indict Marie. getting funny, Buster. Tapping private wires is a serious offense. I'll disconnect. Here, I'll take that. Can you record this? Who gave you this number? Why, uh, Mr. Fielding, our sales manager. Oh, yes. Well, we have some very nice books. The heroine in one is especially attractive. A brunette, about five foot three. Well, that sounds like very interesting reading. How about 10 o'clock at the corner of Sunset and La Brea? There'll be a picture on the front cover. A girl in a mink coat. That'll be fine. Goodbye. number she's calling. Okay, David. Corner Sunset La Brea, 10 o'clock. A girl and a traveling salesman. I'll take care of Marie. What's your name? Voss. Jim Voss. Good work, Voss. down payment left us a little short on furniture, but uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't do wrong starting us off with an empty barn like this. Empty? Why, darling, this house is so full of love that 
I don't know where we'd fit the furniture if we had it. Oh, we'll fit it in all right. This living room will be ankle deep in carpet, wall to wall. And uh, let's see, that's where your sofa will be. A seven foot one. And there's your favorite chair next to the fire. And right opposite is yours, where I can sit and look at you all night. Think of the money we'll save, just sitting and looking at each other. Oh, honey, we're going places, too. And to nothing but the best. <laughs> I can just see the door I'm in now. Mr. Boss's car. And there will be our little jalopy. <laughs> Chauffeur-driven, of course. It'll be a Cadillac. Well, of course, Jim. Uh, what I mean is, honey, I, I just want to grab the world for you and hand it to you on a silver platter. You're my whole world, darling. You're all I really want. Okay, Mrs. Voss. Jim. Why didn't you tell me about the work you were doing on the... Marie Blanche case? Well, I... I couldn't tell anyone. You can tell me anything. I love you. It was a secret, Alice. I was working with the police. I know. But the papers made it sound so sordid. It got us married, didn't it? Can't we stay married on something nicer? Oh, darling, there's lots of work. Clean work with your kind of ability. All right. From here on in, nothing but honest, normal, routine jobs. Promise? I promise. <laughs> oh, no. Did it have to be connected tonight? I'll get rid of whoever it is. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Rumsden. Jim, I have a wedding gift for you. A very important assignment with a nice, fat fee. Oh, I certainly can use it, sir. What kind of a job? A wiretapping job? Now, there's a certain politician down at City Hall that's giving a client of mine some trouble. Now, a good job of wiretapping, such as you did on Marie Blanche, would uh, put this politician in a rather awkward spot. You want to expose him, huh? No, not exactly. Not if he's smart. Let's say that the kind of recorded evidence that we want would uh, put my client in a very good bargaining position. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Rumsden. Uh, this is not the kind of a job I... What was that? I said $2,000. I thought you'd be interested, Jim. I'll see you in my office tomorrow afternoon. Who is that on the phone? A van load of furniture, honey. How do you like it, honey? It's not ours. It's yours. For putting up with me for the last three months. Oh, Jim, you're crazy. We can't afford it. It's a gift from Nick Castro. For a favor I did for him. What kind of a favor could you have done for a gangster, Jim? Honey, I can't afford to ask my clients for references. You said you were working with the police. I have been. How can you work with both police and crooks? Well, a pat on the back won't pay our bills. Who do you think paid for this furniture? The police department? This house was more of a home when it was filled with you. I hardly see you anymore. But I have to be available when I'm needed. To hoodlums? You wouldn't if you'd kept your promise to me. My promise? Not to get mixed up with anything dirty after that Marie Blanche case. But there's nothing dirty about Charles Rumsden. He's one of the biggest attorneys in Los Angeles. He's responsible for every piece of furniture in this house. But I don't want to live with furniture. Wait, Alice. You're right. 
I have neglected you. I just can't go on this way. Everywhere I go, I have to give reasons why you're not with me. I'm sorry. I've even reached the point where I make excuses for you in advance. We'll do anything you say. Tonight is yours. I was planning on going to the church tonight. Our class is having a social. But I've already told him you won't be with me. Then we'll surprise him. Stopping here. There's something I want to tell you. Can't you tell me at home? You may not want to go home when I'm finished. But before I tell you, Ellis, there's something I want you to believe. I love you. And I never wanted you hurt, especially by me. Jim, what is it? Tell me. All the time you thought I... I was winning medals. I was serving a prison sentence for stealing government property. Stealing? I didn't figure it as stealing at the time, but... the Army Court Martial did. For taking a few measly gadgets to add to the fat salary they were already paying me. Are you trying to justify stealing? I'm just trying to explain why, Alice. You waited long enough to tell me this. 
What made you decide to tell me tonight? The speaker, Miss Wilson, wanted me to meet tonight. It was the chaplain at the prison. Then you still wouldn't have told me if... I told you, Alice, I didn't want to hurt you. All those letters. Those important missions. Well, part of the same lie. I was afraid of losing you. You don't lose people who love you when you tell the truth. I wanted to tell you before I came home, Alice. But I couldn't. Now I realize the mistake I made. All right. The rest is up to you. Can you forgive me? Sure. Sure, I can forgive you, Jim. I've made excuses for you before. I can go on making excuses for anything you do. But I can't make the same excuses for our child. Oh, a child. I'm sorry I had to tell you under these conditions. Give me another chance, Alice. Please give me another chance. I'll do anything. You'll even give up all connections with Nick Castro? I promise. <laughs> I don't care what you promised. Besides those joints I hired you to service, I'm opening up some new books. I need some phone extensions. I told you, Nick, I can't afford to get tied in with gambling. What do you mean you can't afford? Where'd you get the car, the house, the clothes, the furniture? Don't tell me them things ain't important. Sure they are, Nick. You've got a better offer, you better forget it. I told you why I have to quit. Nobody tells me nothing. Can't stand to see Ellison happy. Now look, is she gonna be any happy if you don't bring home the bacon to take care of that kid? You tell me where you can make any more dough than what you're making with me. All right, Nick. Just one thing. Please don't call the house. I don't want Alice to find out. Okay. Only you just be where I can find you in a hurry. Hey, what's going on at my joint? Thirty-four T request ambulance regarding shooting at one six one North Crescent Heights Drive. Over. Hey, what gives? Well, it's a cinch we ain't gonna find out from Little Joe Baggett. There's rumors you and him had a falling out, Nick. I don't know what you're talking about. He makes book, I make clothes. <laughs> These guys play for keeps. Looks like the only way out is feet first. Hello, this is the city hospital. I'd like to speak to Mr. Boss, please. Well, do you know where I could find him? I tried both those numbers. Well, thank you very much. He must be on his way, Mrs. Voss. I hope so. Don't worry. New fathers are too excited to miss events like this. Little Joe had a lot of friends crying at his funeral. Can I count on this bale of wire? If anyone enters your property, you'll know it. There's someone at the front door. I'll see who it is. Me, Charlie Rumsden. Evening, Al. They're in the den, Mr. Rumsden. Oh. Well, you're just in time, Charlie. Oh, time for what? To help christen my radar screen. You know, this guy's got me guarded closer than Fort Knox. Well, so that's it. How does it work? You'll see in a minute. I sent some of the boys out to test it. You set off that alarm, Mr. Rumsden, when you came through the front gates. Now, that's Herbie coming over the west wall. 
<laughs> what do you know about that? Oh, it's really very simple. Oh, sure. It's simple, all right, if you happen to be a genius. Now, that's Tony coming over the east wall. You see, Mr. Rumsden, wherever the circuit is broken, these lights register the exact position of the intruder. Let's have a drink on that, huh? All right, good idea. I'll check on her husband once more. Charlie? Jim? That radar screen really works, huh, Nick? Like a charm, Herbie. Well, here's to Jim's brainchild. The hospital. I forgot Alice. You been monkeying with that thing? No, I didn't touch nothing. It's the East Wall. You two guys case the garden. Al, come with me. Visitor's calling card. A time bomb, huh? We'll try and kill it. You know how? I don't know. I have to figure it out. You might figure wrong. Got any idea what time it's set for? Who knows? Five minutes, five seconds. Five seconds? I guess you saved my life, kid. Five minutes ago. Well, I... I was detained, uh, on business. Thanks, nurse. My daughter was born five minutes ago. Okay, so it wasn't a boy. I wasn't there. <laughs> Look, the kid and never know the difference. Tell you what I'll do with you. I'll give you a present for her. Got any dough saved? A little. Bet every cent you got on Grand Lady in the Fourth at Belmont tomorrow. Only don't bet with any of my books. The race is wired. Well, it ain't the first time you lost a race, Tony. It's the first time I lost a fixed race. <laughs> now, how did I know the horse was going to stumble coming out of the gate? Besides, what are you beefing about, you and your 500? Jim here lost three grand. Yeah, 3,000 I didn't have. I ain't worried, kid. You'll pay it back. 
The hospital won't feel that way. You can't pay him a cent. You stick with me and I'll have you in velvet. There'll be another cinch race. Not for me, there won't. The only cinch I know is tomorrow's results today. <laughs> Why tomorrow? A couple of minutes ahead of the race wire is all you need. Hey, Voss, you're a whiz kid. Can't you figure a way of holding back the wire that long? You know, you could build your own private hospital for your next kid. Now, there's something you can work on in your spare time. <laughs> Stop worrying, will you? Here. Now, that's enough dough there to pay your hospital bill. Your wife won't know anything about it. All right, you guys. Break it up. Hey, Jim. Come on, we got business. Morning. It's just the one bag. I'll get my baby and be right with you. Want to take the paper with you, ma'am? Hello, Mother. I'm not coming. I can't now, Mother. I can't leave him when he's in such trouble. I know all that. 
But it doesn't matter. I still love him and he needs me. I can't help it, I do. I have to stay, Mother. I'll call you later. I'm sorry, darling. I don't mean to hurt you. It's just that I... Well, from here on in, I promise you I'll never... Jim, please. No more promises. Don't make any more promises. But last night I got an idea, a big idea. An idea as big as your heart. And how does Nick Castro fit into it? He doesn't. If he ever calls, I'm not in. Do you really mean it, Jim? Yes. But you're going to have to be patient with me. I've got to work out this idea. It may take me weeks, maybe months. But if it works, we'll be on easy street forever. Don't you want to know what the doctor said? The doctor? What is it, Alice? You're going to be a father again. It's got to work. What? The machine, the teletype. I've got to make it work. Whew. It's terrific. If it's true. It's true. I can tie into the race wire service and delay the results long enough for you to bet the winner for us. My end will work. What about yours? Why didn't you go to Nick? You know why. I haven't seen him for three months. I don't want any part of him. Except his money, huh? Not even his money. There are plenty of other books we can work this on. That's small time stuff. With a deal like this, we could make millions. Let's take what we can without taking too many chances, huh? Why did you pick me for this job, Vice? Because I think you're as anxious to break clear of Nick as I am. And because I think you're tired of being a punching bag for him every time something goes sour. Okay, Pally. You get yourself a deal. Nobody can say you travel light. Get lost. Thanks. Are you sure that's the wire we got to cut into? One of them's the right pair already. How long will it take you? I'll take care of it tonight. It'll be ready by post time. Good. Pally, tomorrow we hit him with both barrels.
Hey, Pally, I got time for the fourth race? Yeah, if you hurry. The race is late getting started. They should be at the post now. 200 to win, number four. What? 200 on that goat? Okay. Thanks for the donation, pal. Well, I only get 20 bucks. Bad the tracks aren't open Sundays, Jim. <laughs> Tony, we've earned ourselves a vacation. Well, what do you call this? Best vacation I ever had. Yeah, but we've been hitting them pretty hard for the last two months. And without a letter, we've been lay low for a while. Besides, I promised Alice a vacation. Well, wait a minute, Jim. There's one guy I got a little account to square with. One more, huh? All right, Tony. One more. Good. Sure got in under the wire on that race, buddy. That's the way it goes, Pally. What made you bet that nag? 20 to 1. I got a system. He's got a system. Just your luck when you tried it on me, boss. Okay, that's enough for a while. I didn't know it was your book, Nick. I told Tony to lay off. You included me in that warning, boss. That was my twenty thousand. The cops found in me's pocket. Why you? Two-bit bell fixer. After taking out of that burlap you were wearing, putting you in a $200 suit. Staked you to everything you own. Kept you from being dumped in a river when you couldn't make good that three grand bet. Paid your hospital bill. Okay, okay. I'll pay it all back to you. You can make book on that. Whatever made you think you could walk out on us? Or maybe you don't know why you're still alive. It ain't that we love you, boss. No more than we love Tony. It just so happens we need you. And you better make sure we keep needing you. What do you want? That gadget of yours. Who else knows about it? No one. Not even my wife. We'll keep it that way, boss. You're gonna make a little trip. A trip? What do you want? I'll do anything. I'll work with you. You'll work for me, not with me. And maybe if you follow orders, you might come back from St. Louis in one piece. St. Louis? You and Tony scratched up a little chicken feed. We're gonna set up shop in St. Louis and take every bookie west of there. But you'll be bucking the whole syndicate. When we're through, I'll be the syndicate. What if they find out? You better pray that they don't. When do we leave? Tomorrow night. I can't leave tomorrow night. I said tomorrow night. Be here at 10 o'clock. And that means 10 o'clock sharp.
Good. Jim, what happened to you? Well, I, I was crossing the street to my car and some crazy driver bumped me. I'm lucky I wasn't run over. Oh, honey. I'll call a doctor. No, wait. I, I'm okay. Uh, they checked me at the emergency hospital. It's just a lot of scratches. Then I'll call Mother and tell her not to pick up Madeline tonight. No, wait. But, Jim, the beach isn't going to be any vacation for you until you feel better. Look, honey, I... Our vacation will have to wait. Some business has come up. That's all right, darling. I understand. So maybe it would be better if your mother did pick up Madeline tonight and... I could run you over tomorrow night. Why do we have to go to Mother's? I have to leave town. And I don't want you here alone. Leave town? Now, before the baby comes? I know what you're thinking, honey. Seems I'm never around when you need me the most. This time I can't help it. You couldn't help it when Madeline was born. But I got a 10 o'clock appointment. I just can't put it off. I still don't know why I can't stay here in our own house. Honey, I told you I didn't want you alone. Everything's arranged. Your mother will take better care of you and Madeline than I can. But it's you I want with me. Don't make it more difficult. I'd give anything if I didn't have to go. Would you? Please get in the car. Jim, look. Let's go hear him. What? Please, Jim. You've got a couple of hours. But I want to see you settle before I go. There might not be much time. There may never be a better time. What do you mean by that? I can't explain it. I, I just have a feeling it's something I need. Something that will help me tonight. When you're gone. All right. We can't stay long. Jesus knew that they were following him because they'd seen him do great miracles. But that's not enough. Jesus demands more than that. Jesus demands repentance of sin. Jesus demands renouncing your sins and following him. And one of those people that said we'd like to follow you was Nicodemus, a religious leader. But Jesus had said no even to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came quietly to him one night and said, Master, I'd like to talk over this problem. I'd like to talk over my spiritual life. And Jesus turned to this religious leader and said, Nicodemus, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Have you been born again? And Nicodemus was taken aback. Born again? He'd never even heard of being born again. Jesus said, the only way to heaven is by the new birth. Well, what do you mean by the new birth, you say? Well, the Bible teaches, first of all, that you're a sinner. The Bible teaches that you've sinned against God. You've broken the laws of God. Every person in this tent tonight has broken the laws of Almighty God. What are the laws? The Ten Commandments. And the Bible says that any man that breaks the Ten Commandments is a sinner. And all the problems of the world tonight come from the fact that men are sinners. And all of your problems come from the fact that you're sinners. It's getting oh, late, there are many honey. people Let's that go. think that they can live a life of sin and get away with it. You think that you can beat the game of sin. You think that sin pays off. But sin pays off in nothing except misery, heartache, disillusionment, inner tension. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Some of you, the devil has told you will give you a part of the world. You've gained a little bit of this world's goods. You've gained a little bit of popularity and notoriety, perhaps. But all of that, Jesus said, is nothing compared to losing your own soul. The Bible says the moment you die, that your soul goes out into eternity, banished from the presence of God forever. You're a sinner tonight, and you need to repent of your sin and give your heart to Christ. You say, well, Billy, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned against God. I know that I've failed God. I know that I've done things I shouldn't do. But what can I do about it? I can't. 
can't Please stand do anymore of this. Be born again. You say we'll be born again. What do you mean what are you by that? What afraid of? It means that you can afraid. actually become a part of God's life. You can have God's life in you. You can be forgiven of every sin. You can know that you're going to heaven. You can have peace and joy and rest in your heart by surrendering and giving your life and heart to Jesus Christ. You can be born again. Now, the moment you receive Christ as your Savior, the moment you open your heart and let Christ in, He comes in and makes you a new moral person. He just doesn't clean up the old person. He just doesn't whitewash the old barn. He makes you an entirely new creation. You become literally a brand new person by giving your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. It's an infusion of God's life into you. And then you say, well, Billy, how do I receive this new birth? How do I get it? Where can I find it? Come to Jesus Christ right now. Come to the foot of the cross. It was on the cross that he died for your sins. It was at the cross that God made reconciliation with man. And at the cross, you can find forgiveness of your sin. You can find peace and joy and salvation by coming to the foot of the cross. You say, what will it cost? It will cost you your sins. You'll have to give up your sins. You have to renounce them. I don't find a verse of scripture anywhere in the Bible where it says that you can live any kind of life you want to and be a Christian. You have to renounce sins. That's what repentance means. It means to turn from sins, to acknowledge your sins. And then by faith you open your heart and let Jesus Christ come in. By faith you receive him as your own personal savior. And the moment you do it, he forgives every sin you've ever committed. You become born again. You become a new person a new creation, and you can leave this tent tonight knowing that if you died, you would go to heaven. You can leave this tent tonight with all the past forgiven. You can leave this tent tonight walking on air with a smile on your face and joy in your heart and a spring in your step by letting Jesus Christ come into your heart. And I'm going to ask tonight in this great tent, all of you that will receive Christ, all of you that will renounce your sins, all of you that want to receive the new birth and be born again, I'm going to ask you in a few moments to get up out of your seat. And I'm going to ask you to come quietly and reverently and stand in front of this platform and say by coming, I give my life and my heart to Jesus Christ. As I've stood here this evening, I've felt all evening that there's a man somewhere in this audience. He's heard this message many times before. And the Spirit of God is striving mightily with him at this moment. And if he doesn't come to Christ now, he may never come. We're going to wait a moment. There's still time for you to come. You come and give your life to Christ. Everything I left out about my time in prison. There are so many things I've got to make right. We will, Jim. We? It's still our life, darling. Before I can expect you to share this part of my life with me, I want you to realize what it's going to mean. The price we might have to pay it may mean giving up the house, the furniture, car, everything we possess. We'll start all over, together. I'm trying to tell you, Alice, it may not be together. There are laws about these things, laws I've broken. Prison. I'm more afraid of what Rumsden and his mob might do to you. Oh, Jim. 
think I'm scared. Did you have to phone them? We could have been miles away by now. I'm through running away, Alice. I've been doing that my whole life. Sure, I could run away from them. But I can't keep on running away from myself. Something happened to me tonight in that tent. For the first time in my life, I'm willing to face the music. To play it straight. It's a wonderful, clean feeling. You should have left Madeline at your mother's house. I'm going to call the police. No, wait. This is something I have to do for myself. Listen to me. Go in the bedroom and stay with the baby. Alice, please. beginning to think maybe he'd run out on us. I'm through running, Mr. Rumsden. All right, then. Come on, let's go. I guess you didn't understand my phone call. I'm not going to St. Louis. I'm not going anywhere with you. We're late, boss. I'm in no mood for jokes. I was never more serious in my life. I don't know how good I'll be at explaining this. It's all so new. But you see, tonight I... I heard a minister preach a sermon. What is this? What are you giving us? Don't be frightened, darling. Everything's going to be all right. You expect us to swallow that slop? Okay. So the preacher slips you a few dollars to make a headline. Wiretapper Voss hits sawdust trail. All right, it gets a few more suckers down on their knees in his tent tomorrow night. But tonight, you and I have got plane tickets for St. Louis. You have. Not me. Look, I don't know this Graham character, what kind of magic he uses, but I do know it's not healthy for you. I'm trying to make you understand. Do you think we'd let you walk out on us? I've already walked out. And if there's a price to pay, I'm going to have to pay it. You're not talking sense. They'll throw the book at you. You'll spend the rest of your life in jail. If those bookies you clipped don't get you first, maybe you should remember what happened to Tony. We're giving you a choice, Voss. The same trip Tony took, or the one you can still make with me. The Jim Voss you gave that choice to is already dead. He died tonight in the tent. Somebody else was born. A guy no longer interested in the fast buck, the shady deal. It's all tied up with a lot of words like repentance, forgiveness. Is that the way you want it, Ross? It's not what I want. It's what I must do. It's not just you, Rumsden, or you, Nick, that I have to straighten myself out with. You're at the bottom of a long list of people I have to square myself with. I'll straighten you out right now. You leave him alone. You're going to let him get away with this? He's not getting away with anything. Come on. I'm going to take care of this now, Charlie. Nick, I said, come on.
There was a man in the tent tonight. He showed me a verse in the Bible. From the book of Proverbs. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him.